Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 1 to 10 for the CompTIA Cloud Plus exam. Let's begin. A software engineer needs to transfer data over the internet using programmatic access while also being able to query the data. Which of the following will best help the engineer to complete this task? The correct answer is D. GraphQL. GraphQL is best suited for this scenario because it allows programmatic data access over the internet while providing flexible querying. It enables clients to specify exactly what data they need and retrieve it in a single request, making it more efficient than traditional REST APIs or direct database queries. Why the other options are incorrect? A. SQL. This is used to query relational databases directly, not for programmatic internet-based data transfer. B. WebSockets. This provide real-time, two-way communication, but do not support structured querying of data. C. RPC. This enables executing remote procedures, but lacks the query flexibility needed for retrieving structured data efficiently. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A company needs to deploy its own code directly in the cloud without provisioning additional infrastructure. Which of the following is the best cloud service model for the company to use? The correct answer is A. PaaS. PaaS is the best choice because it allows the company to deploy its own applications directly in the cloud without needing to provision or manage the underlying infrastructure. The cloud provider handles servers, storage, networking, and runtime environments, while the company focuses only on writing and deploying code. Why the other options are incorrect? B. SAAS. SAAS provides ready-to-use applications. The company cannot deploy its own code in the SAAS model. C. IAAS. Infrastructure as a service gives raw infrastructure, but the company will still need to provision and configure resources before deploying code. D. XAAS. Anything as a service is a broad term that refers to multiple cloud services, not a specific model. It's too general to be the best fit for deploying code directly. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company just learned that the data in its object storage was accessed by an unauthorized party. Which of the following should the company have done to make the data unusable? The correct answer is D. The company should have encrypted the data at rest. Encryption at rest ensures that even if unauthorized parties gain access to the raw storage, the data remains unreadable without the proper decryption keys. This makes the stolen data unusable. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The company should have switched from object storage to file storage. Changing storage type does not protect against unauthorized access. Both object and file storage need security controls. B. The company should have hashed the data. Hashing is used for integrity verification, not for securing data confidentiality. It cannot be reversed into the original data, but does not protect the actual stored content if access is gained. C. The company should have changed the file access permissions. While permissions reduce unauthorized access, once bypassed, the data remains exposed. This doesn't make the stolen data unusable. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A customer relationship management application, which is hosted in a public cloud IaaS network, is vulnerable to a remote command execution vulnerability. Which of the following is the best solution for the security engineer to implement to prevent the application from being exploited by basic attacks? The correct answer is D. WAF. A WAF is the best solution because it specifically protects web applications against common exploits such as SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and remote command execution. It inspects and filters HTTP, HTTPS traffic, preventing attackers from exploiting vulnerabilities in the application. Why the other options are incorrect? A. IPS. An IPS protects networks from known threats and suspicious activity, but it is more generalized and not tailored to application layer web exploits like RCE in a web app. B. ACL. ACLs restrict which IPs, ports, or protocols can connect but they do not inspect the actual application layer traffic for malicious commands. C. DLP. DLP protects sensitive data from leaving the organization, not from external attackers exploiting vulnerabilities. Therefore, the correct answer is D. 
Which of the following is the difference between a sand and a nest? The correct answer is D. A NAS uses a slower protocol than a SAN. A SAN typically uses block level protocols such as Fiber Channel or ISCSI, which are faster and more efficient for storage access. A NAS uses file level protocols like NFS or SMB, which are generally slower because they add more overhead. Why do the options are incorrect? A. A SAN works only with fiber-based networks. While SANs often use fiber channel, they can also run over Ethernet. B. A SAN works with any Ethernet-based network. SANs require specialized configurations and are not simply deployed over any standard Ethernet network. C. A NAS uses a faster protocol than a SAN. NAS uses file-level protocols, which are slower than SANs block-level protocols. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A cloud engineer is troubleshooting an application that consumes multiple third-party REST APIs. The application is randomly experiencing high latency. Which of the following would best help determine the source of the latency? The correct answer is D. Enabling tracing to detect HTTP response times and codes. Tracing provides visibility into how long each API request takes including response times and status codes. This makes it possible to pinpoint which third-party REST API is causing latency and whether the issue is with the external provider or the application itself. Why do the options are incorrect? A. Configuring centralized logging to analyze HTTP requests. Centralized logging helps with correlation but doesn't provide detailed timing information to identify latency sources. B. Running a flow log on the network to analyze the packets. Flow logs show network traffic metadata, but don't reveal API level latency or response codes. C. Configuring an API gateway to track all incoming requests. An API gateway helps manage, secure, and monitor incoming traffic, but in this case, the problem is with outbound calls to third-party APIs. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A group of cloud administrators frequently uses the same deployment template to recreate a cloud-based development environment. The administrators are unable to go back and review the history of changes they made to the template. Which of the following cloud resource deployment concepts should the administrator start using? The correct answer is D. Versioning Versioning allows administrators to track and manage changes made to deployment templates over time. With version control, they can review the history of changes, revert to previous versions if needed, and collaborate more effectively. Why do the options are incorrect? A. Drift detection. This identifies when the current cloud environment configuration no longer matches the defined template, but it does not track historical changes to the template itself. B. Repeatability. This ensures that the same template can be used to consistently recreate environments, but it doesn't provide a history of changes. C. Documentation. This provides written details about configurations and changes, but lacks automated tracking and rollback capabilities. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A company wants to optimize cloud resources and lower the overhead caused by managing multiple operating systems. Which of the following compute resources would be best to help to achieve this goal? The correct answer is B. Containers. Containers are the best choice because they share the host operating system kernel, reducing the overhead of managing multiple full operating systems. This makes them lightweight, faster to deploy, and more resource efficient compared to virtual machines. Why do the options are incorrect? A. VM. VMs each require their own guest operating system, which increases overhead in terms of resource usage and management. C. Remote desktops. Remote desktops provide user environments but do not reduce OS management overhead for applications or services. D. Bare metal servers. Bare metal servers run directly on physical hardware and require managing the full OS for each deployment, which increases overhead rather than reducing it. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A company runs a discussion forum that caters to global users. The company's monitoring system reports that the homepage suddenly is seeing elevated response times, 
even though internal monitoring has reported no issues or changes. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this issue? The correct answer is C. DDoS A DDoS attack is the most likely cause. It overwhelms the application with excessive traffic from many sources, leading to elevated response times or downtime, even when internal monitoring shows no configuration issues or system changes. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Cryptojacking This hijacks computing resources to mine cryptocurrency but typically causes performance degradation on servers, not sudden elevated response times on a public-facing website. B. Human error. This would likely show up in internal monitoring. Since no changes were reported, this is less likely. D. Phishing. This targets users by tricking them into giving up sensitive information. It does not directly cause elevated response times on a website. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Which of the following migration types is best to use when migrating a highly available application? which is normally hosted on a local VM cluster for usage with an external user population. The correct answer is C. On-premises to cloud. The best migration type is moving the highly available application from an on-premises VM cluster to the cloud. This allows the application to scale and serve an external user population more effectively, taking advantage of cloud elasticity, global accessibility, and managed high availability. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Cloud to on-premises. This moves workloads back to a local data center, which doesn't help with serving a wider external user base. B. Cloud to cloud. This is useful when switching providers, but the application is currently on-premises, not already on the cloud. D. On-premises to on-premises. This is simply migrating between local environments and does not expand access to external users. Therefore, the correct answer is C. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.